have with rate of speed, flow, and move. So speed, a couple things we have to know. We have to know what the speed source is. Is it a GPS? Is it a radar? I don't think we have very many people do wheel magnets anymore, but that is where you put magnets on a wheel with a sensor and every time that wheel rotates, we get that though. That's been used in the past. Radar is going away. Almost everybody uses some form of GPS, whether it be on the tractor or the little sky track that goes on the toolbar, those little things. But GPS is a really true and uh, speed where variations can happen with the wheel magnets and the radar. GPS is always true. Uh, we have to know a speed count. So in the controller, we have to know how many pulses we receive from that speed source. So if it's a GPS, it outputs so many pulses in order to get the correct distance. So if you want to go a mile, you have to know how many pulses to count to get to that mile. How many pulses per foot do we go? That's what we do. So we, we go by that and we have to have a calibration number to make sure it's correct. So we always have to enter that in. And also the GPS settings. And when it comes to flow, there's some things we have to know. What kind of application type are you using here? That would be, are we doing anhydrous ammonia? Are we doing spray? Are we doing dry? We can do all three. We can calculate all of them, so we have to enter in so the controller can calculate accordingly. Uh, we have to know the readings that it gets from the other components, if it's whatever application type you're reading. The valve type, that is the type of valve. We have different valves, we'll go into that. They all, record, they all serve a different function and they still measure the, uh, and able to uh, control the flow, but we have to know how much. There's also the valve cap, it has their own control valve. That's all on tags on the valve, so, and the valve type, it's easy to know. And finally, the, the flow meter cap. So each, same thing with the flow meter, kind of like the GPS, it counts by pulses. So we have to have a calibration number to know what how many pulses it has to count in order to read the flow correctly. If we're running uh, 100 gallons per minute through that flow meter, we have to know that it's counting so it's exactly 100 gallons. That's what the meter cal does. It counts those pulses for it. We'll get into that a little later. And finally, we have to know how wide your boom is. We have to know the width of it, and we have to know if we have sections, how wide each section is, because we want to if you're shutting off sections at a time, we have to be able, it'll compensate. So it not only will it compensate for how slow, if you're driving slower, it will compensate for how many booms there are. Those are things we gotta look at. And if we have automatic boom control as well, which is great and call back.